Okay, so in your smart home, you've got a bunch of Twitter devices already installed. So in this video, I'll show you three ways to integrate them into Apple HomeKit. So let's not waste our time and let's jump into this tutorial. Well, welcome to my channel. My name is Eddie D'Souza and if you're into smart home DIY and obviously love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, then there are tons of tutorial videos that I have done. So please do take a look and don't be shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Alrighty, I'd like to start off this year by showing you all the three ways to integrate your two year smart devices into Apple HomeKit based on what type of control you want to have and which device type you want to expose. Now I've categorized each way from easy to complex configurations. Remember, there's no soldering or prying involved or required into this video. So for all of this to work and integrate your tour devices into Apple HomeKit, we will need one, a two year user account, two, a two year developer account, three, some two year smart devices already installed. Now for all three ways, we will be using the Zemi smart uh, light that I have already uh, here. Uh, and to enable the cross-platform integration, we will be using HomeBridge. Plus, I've also added additional guides on how to install HomeBridge. And you can use this tutorial with Hoops as well. As always, I've broken down the video into three parts with their timestamps in the description. They are easy way configuration by simply using your two-year credentials. Two, the easy two-year developer way. You can use two years official HomeBridge plugin to expose your devices. And lastly, my favorite, the easy local control way. If you are like me and need to have that total local control over to your devices, then I'll show you on how it can be done. So let's not waste time like I always say, and let's jump into this tutorial. All right. Now let's go and log it into HomeBridge and we'll go and configure the first easy plugin by using your email credentials. Now the first plugin over here is purely using your email credentials and it has the following features which all of your to your Wi-Fi enabled devices can be enabled in HomeKit. And if you scroll all the way down, you can see the, the only credentials you need is your username and password. So if you scroll a little bit form further down, you will see all of the devices that you can uh, control. So it gives you a lot of options, climate cover, a fan, your dimmer switches, your light switches, even expose scenes that you've configured in Tuya and also expose your switch and outlet. So what we're gonna do now is going to uh, configure this plugin. Now, as a tip, a very easy way to search plugins within the HomeBridge user interface is by copying the header of the plugin. And don't worry, I've left all the links in the description. So let's go ahead and just copy this. Let's go to HomeBridge, go to plugins. You want to look for it. You want to click on install. Now give it a couple of seconds. And all you have to do right now is go ahead and put in your credentials. So this is my credentials your password, your country code, and the platform. Now in this plugin, you have three platforms. So if you configured your devices using the Tuya app, the Smart Life app, and the uh, Jinwo uh, Smart app, you can configure and expose them. So in my case, we're going to be using Tuya Smart and just leave all the other settings as is. Don't change anything and let's click save. And what we want to do now is go and hit restart. And while that's happening, let's go back to status. We want to see if uh, the device is uh, being uh, enabled. So you can see over here that the web plugin has got the demo lamp over here. And let's click on accessories and we can see that the demo lamp is over here. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to quickly click on it and you can see it, it has turned on. So just using the internet connectivity between the plugin and Tuya's cloud, we can control this device. So what does this mean? This plugin uses your email credentials and requires an active internet connection. Now, if I uh, go over to HomeKit, And it's over here, so I can control this device through HomeKit. 
And if I go through the plugins configuration, you will see that you can even go and expose these device types into uh, this plugin. And it, lots of options available to uh, expose a device. So this is one easy way of just using your email credentials that uses internet connection to have them enabled within Apple HomeKit. Now let's go see the second way. Now, the second way is most interesting that two years development team had released last year a HomeBridge plugin where they are actively supporting the HomeBridge community. So this is very uh, uh, good news for all of us that use two-year devices and it makes a lot more easier exposing to Apple HomeKit. But the uh, configuration is a lot more different than the previous easy uh, plugin um, where you use your email credentials. So let's go now see how we can go and configure two years development plugin. So this is their web page and this is the official plugin. So we can quickly see all the device types that they support. There is a lot of device types they support. So you can choose between the previous plugin and, and this one. And the good news is if you go to their GitHub page, open up an issue, they actively resolve it and try to assist you to enable that device um, into Apple HomeKit. So they're very active community. Uh, to configure this plugin, what we need to do is first go and install it. So what we're going to do, we're just going to copy this header, go to HomeBridge, plugins, hit enter, click install. Give it a couple of seconds for the plugin to install. Okay, now once the plugin installed, there is a lot of fields to populate. So we know what is our username. We know what's our password. We know our country code. Now let's quickly go and get the access ID, access key, and the other information. So to do that, we need to access two years a development platform. To do that, we're gonna to go to the site called uh, iot.twoyear.com and we're going to log in. We're going to go to cloud, development. We're going to create a new project. We're just going to call this our demo session. We're going to select the industry. So you're going to select smart home, the development smart home, and go ahead and just select all the data centers. You're going to click on create. And over here, you're going to select the following API uh, services, device log and notification. And all you're going to do is click on authorize. Now, once that is done, you want to go to devices. You want to go to link to your app account, add to your app account. So what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly open up this app over here called to your smart in you have to click on your profile click on the scan account and all we're going to do is scan account here confirm login and let's go to devices we should see these two devices over here so we've got the demo lamp as well as one garage opener that i have installed now what we're going to do is we're going to go to overview and for this plugin we need the access id so let's go here let's copy this value over here. Next one, you want to get the uh, access secret, paste that here. So once you fill the access key, what you want to do is also select the project type as well as the platform. So in this case, we'll be using Twia Smart, and then we're going to click on save. Once it's saved, let's click on restart bridge. It's that simple. So. You, all you're doing is using their two-year development platform to get all of the devices officially supported by them. Okay, so once the plugins are loaded, you want to go to accessories. You can see over here that the demo lamp and the garage door is over here. So that confirms through their uh, web dev uh, development platform, we're able to expose the devices. So I can uh, control the lamp, turn it off, and as well as the, the garage. So if I go back over here to my Apple Home app, I can also control over here. So again, this plugin uses your internet connection and that's how it exposes all the devices in the two-year 
um, web development and then export it into Apple HomeKit. Now let's go to the next one, my favorite, how to control this whole device locally without even an internet connection and get that local key. I've done this video a couple of times of extracting the local key and every time I did it, two years somehow just changed it and there's always a new direction on their uh, development platform saying they've just restructured the whole thing. So I'm going to give it another try and uh, we're going to extract that two-year local key. Quite simple, very easy. There's no complications anymore. And for that first, let's go and understand which plugin we are going to use. So uh, the plugin we're going to use is called Homebridge Two-Year. This is the one it's maintained since last year. And if you go to their GitHub page and uh, wiki, you can see all of the device types that are over here. So each one of them has a different type of configuration. Now this is where you can literally fine tune what you want to expose of that device type, how you want to control it. So all of the control is in your hands and you can do that for your entire smart home. So what we're going to do is let's go first and install the plugin. So this is over here in plugins. install. Now while this plugin is installed, let's go and get the local key. So let's go back to the two year IOT page over here. And this is the our demo session cloud development project that we created. And let's use the same project to extract the local key. So we're going to go to devices. We're going to select the demo lamp copy and we're going to open up API Explorer. The most crucial part over here is to always select the correct data center. So I am in Western America data center. I'm going to go under smart home management system, going to go under device management and scroll all the way down to get device details. I'm just going to scan uh, paste the device ID, submit request. That's it. It's there. Your local key is right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Homebridge. We're going to select the type. So this one right here is a white and colored light bulb. So I'm just going to select this. I'm going to give it a name. So it's a demo lamp. Two year ID is the one that we just copied. The two year key, we go back to two year. Copy, paste, manufacturer. Okay. Now here you can go and literally uh, change all of these values in uh, my, one of my tips is always go to GitHub issues. You know how to really uh, fine tune your device type. And all we're going to go do over here is click on save, start the home bridge, allow it to load all of its plugins. And you see that over here that is discover the two year, uh, the demo lamp is right here and we start querying the lamp. Now, if I go to accessories, it's right here, demo lamp. So if I click on it, it's turning on and off. And if I go to my Apple Home app, it does uh, uh, enable adaptive lighting. So that's fantastic. And I can turn it on. So even if I go to settings, I can change colors. And this fixture literally works locally. And that's the third way for you. Just like that, you have three ways of adding your two year devices to HomeKit. You can now choose on how you want to control them in your smart home. As always, to keep all this going, please don't forget to hit the like, share and subscribe button to always follow along because that's the real driver, that's the real motivator. The more the merrier for bringing all of this content for us. And if there's anything I can help you with, don't feel shy to leave a comment down below and do visit the developers webpage to give them your support as well. So my friends, until the next time, have a nice day, stay safe, cheers, and happy automation.